Okay. All right, now once you move up past just using your cell phone and just using your uh, an action camera and you want to get a true sort of video camera to what we call mirrorless cameras. There are a different version of DSLR cameras. DSLR means digital single lens reflex. That's exactly what this camera is. It is a stills camera, sort of a 19... 60s, 70s, 80s type of camera. In those days you didn't have digital. All you had was analog. They were called SLR cameras, you know, single lens reflex. And the reflex is a mirror. See back when you all you had was the lens and some celluloid, the film, that lens just focused the image onto the film and but you could not expose that film to light or you would ruin the film. You guys remember back in those days? you had a mirror that would flop down, a door that would close and block light from getting into the film, okay? But there was a mirror on the front side of that window that reflected bounce light up here, down here, down here, bam, back into your eye so that you can look through the viewport and actually see what the lens was seeing. It's an optical viewfinder. Well, when things went digital, they just replaced the film with a computer chip, right? A sensor. Sometimes photographers will call it the chip or, you know, most of the time they call it the sensor. Well, the sensor doesn't need to be held off from the light. You can literally take the uh, lens off. Okay, that's no lens. That, that is the lens actually exposed directly to, to light. All you see is probably white light. You might see some shades of something. It's not focused or anything. That's what it looks like. And if you did that with film, you would ruin the film, you have to throw it all away and put new film in. Ah, dead battery. Then Olympus came along. Olympus is a long time uh, photographic company said, wait a minute, if we don't need a mirror anymore, why are we wasting time making our cameras have all these same old stinking uh, pinoprisms and things? Well, the four thirds format, did have the pinna prism, uh, but it was a smaller chip, you know, a smaller sensor than some of the other chips that are out there. And then they did that with Kodak, and Kodak went out of business. And then they come along, they partnered with Panasonic and realized, wait a minute, we don't need this mirror anymore. This is just an old analog piece of gear that makes no sense. Not in this digital era. So they just got rid of it. So with a mirrorless camera, or DSLM, when you hit the button to see it, what they call live view format, what you're seeing on that screen is exactly what is being rendered to the computer file. That's valuable for doing video. That's why you see me saying I hate this camera because it's an older technology that just doesn't have much of a place in the modern era because you're gonna get better video capability with a mirrorless camera. It has to do with the way you're focusing. It has to do with, you know how, if you watch some of my old videos, you'll see every, everything was all shaky and stuff. If I were hand holding, and one of the most important things is to keep the camera fixed, keep the camera still. That's why I keep it fixed on a tripod. I just shoot here like this, and shots are still basic, and I just cut between shots. And another thing that has to do with the way you're focusing, no matter how much you think you're focused with this, you're always not quite in focus, right? Because I can't put that camera up to my eye and adjust the focus like the way the old school photographers did. Because it will not show, because once the mirror is up, no light's getting through the mirror pentaprism to show me what's going on. Whereas with an, opt with an electronic viewfinder, I'm seeing exactly what's going on and I can focus manually on the shot on the spot, adjust the aperture. Mirrorless is the way to go if you're wanting to step up into a DSLR type cameras. Don't get the old DSLRs, get the mirrorless, stick to your Panasonic G7s, your G4s, the G5, the G5S, uh, even Olympus's cameras have decent video capability. I mean, all the mirrorless cameras, Sony's mirrorless cameras are good, uh, Canon has their new M50, very good. 
Now, on the surface, surface, these will look like regular cameras because a lot of times they'll keep the same form factor because that form factor has been around since the, what, the, that form factor works well with your hands and your fingers and adjusting things. Mirrorless technology. I don't care what brand, just pick one. A lot of people like Sony because you get the big full frame sensor. A lot of people like Canon because they've been shooting Canon for years and years and years and they just want to stick with Canon. But the only camera they have mirrorless is the M50 or whatever, the only serious mirrorless camera. Nikon, they're just been, they're working on a mirrorless camera, but who knows what direction they're going to take. They've not been really answering the marketplace, and I'm, I'm sort of done with them. Panasonic, Olympus, Sony, um, Blackmagic, Zcam. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Just type in, go to B&H Photo and just type in mirrorless. Or, and here's another good reason that mirrorless is really the mount to use, I think. You can finally use all these old lenses that fell out of favor once things went digital. Because see, Canon and Nikon, here's what they do. They, especially Nikon, they, the distance between the lens and the film, or the lens and the sensor, has to be an exact distance I don't know they call that the flange distance now I don't I'm not a camera technician so I don't know how all this stuff works but I know that Nikon lenses are such that um, they're a little bit further out than others and it makes it very difficult to use old lenses with them and you're just sort of stuck and a lot of camera manufacturers what they want you to do they don't just want you to buy their camera they want you to buy all their lenses so you're stuck into their system you're stuck with them I don't want to do that. I want to use whatever lens I want to use on the camera. Well, that's exactly what Panasonic and Olympus did with the Micro Four Thirds. They came, it, it, it's basically an open standard. You look at Blackmagic new pocket cinema camera, the brand new one that's going to be coming out in September. What mount did they choose? Well, they chose Micro Four Thirds. Why? Because they don't have to develop their own lenses. Micro Four Thirds is an open standard and you can use whatever lens you want. You go, I can actually go buy an, an, uh, an Olympus lens and use it with a Panasonic camera. With the use of an adapter, I can go use old Russian lenses, so you know, old Russian Soviet, ex-Soviet lenses that were made back during the Cold War. I can actually take an adapter. I can use old Canon lenses from the 60s and from the 70s and from the 80s even. I can use old um, Japanese lenses like the Yashik, um, I can't pronounce it, Yashinan and Yashika lenses. I can use old Pentax lenses like the Takumars. All of a sudden, with mirrorless technology, those cameras are totally legitimate. Realism with elegant simplicity, that's what I'm all about, and I can get that with those vintage lenses. Uh, those vintage lenses had some flaws in them, the way they would flare in the sun too much, some of them. Uh, well, those sorts of effects are desired now. They do that digitally now, and it looks fake. A real lens flare where the light comes into the camera and bounces all around, except going directly into the sensor, it bounces around and it makes these cool little lens flare effects. You're talking quartets or jazz combos or even playing concerti with symphony orchestras. We, we've gone to an era of industrializing everything and making everything exactly the same. These new lenses just don't have any character. Those old lenses had a lot of character because of the inherent flaws of the limits of the technology that they had at the time. We can use those lenses because those lenses were designed to last a lifetime. Consider that, check that out, and I will talk to you later. Alright, so next time let's talk about the best camera for both hybrid shooting. That's stills and video all in the same camera.